Hello, everybody. This is Anthony Metivier. Welcome to the replay of this. If you're not with us live right now, if you're with us live right now, hit the thumbs up. Let me know in the chat where in the world you are. We're going to talk about the mind palace technique. We're going to talk about what it is, how it relates to things like the memory palace and other things. Quick sound check, if you will, let me know that you can actually hear me either with your thumbs up or with your uh, actual typing, which is always great. Be active opens up your brain and let's talk about what this is all about this mind palace and what real memory techniques are about and what you need to do in order to get them hopping for yourself so I'm gonna assume that you're all hearing this and uh, let's go so we want to start by defining the memory technique that we're using so you're gonna find that there are just tons and tons and tons of terms for the mind palace. There's the method of loci, method of loci, <laughs> method of loci. People pronounce it many, many different ways. You'll come across that. That's a little bit confusing, but of course we're talking about location and locations that are distinguished from one another in particular ways that we really want to have a great deal of focus on and concentration and be able to zero in on a multiplicity of locations, right? Not just one at a time, but rather uh, we're going to visit one at a time, but we want to have this sense of a journey, right? Which is one of the reasons why we use the journey method. Uh, another term that you'll come across is the Roman room. And uh, the Roman room is quite interesting uh, where that... Uh, you know, would originate from, but I'm pretty sure it has to do with the general idea that the Romans used to use this. And a uh, little known fact, but in speeches when people say, in the first place, in the second place, even in our essays to this day, that is coming from the Roman room version of the memory palace technique, or the mind palace technique, because people are literally thinking of the first place in their memory palace and then they're thinking about the second place and so on so that's the origin of that in our writing so lee is here thanks for saying hello lee from newcastle england going through card memorization right now and can hear perfectly great thanks for being here lee i saw your uh, videos and uh, really wonderful amazing thank you for sharing those and uh, hope to see more to come and great that you are doing card memorization as we speak. I hope that we don't interrupt you here and your focus and concentration, but uh, that's great and uh, love to uh, learn more about that. So that's uh, one of the cool little facts there from the Roman room history uh, about uh, the names of the places and so forth. If you're just joining us, hit that thumbs up. Let me know in the chat below where you are in the world, what you're doing right now. And uh, we're doing this at a different time uh, to capture more of the world. And uh, I hope that uh, you'll let me know that you appreciate us doing this for your time zone. Because if not, we don't have to do it. <laughs> we can continue with the regular old time where people are bright and alive and active. And uh, uh, we hope that you will uh, let us know either now in the chat below that you like this and uh, appreciate this being at this time for you. Or if you're watching the replay, down in the discussion below that opens up after and uh, that is great to know because engagement is everything harvinder is here hello harvinder thanks for saying hello always good to see you so we've got two master class students here and mastermind members excellent excellent to see by the way uh, some people have heard about the new memory dojo initiative and are wondering about it start with the free course there at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash yt and uh if you enter uh, our realm, our world, like Lee and Harvinder have done, then uh, you will find out how to get into the different things like the mastermind and the dojo. So that's uh, that. We got a couple other terms to talk about here, such as the uh, journey method or the memory journey. And really the key points that we want to think about here are really what are we talking about with this journey business? It sounds like a lot of hard work, don't you think? You have to go on a long journey. Some people, it, it resonates uh, for them, which is fine. Basically, these are mental models for something that will uh, define, I think, 
much more closely in a minute here in a way that's a lot more powerful and useful. But if it works for you, then the definition doesn't matter. So if you like the idea of going on a journey, a memory journey, or using a journey method, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that there are ultimately better memory journey uh, possibilities, but um, uh, or uh, me metaphors, and we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, yeah, you're, you you want to think about is that really adventurous for you? Is that helpful for you to have that model? Uh, Harvinder says thanks for opening this live stream at, at your time. Okay, so this is a good time for you, Harvinder. Thanks for letting me know. He says no problemo, Anthony. Uh, try to spread my wings and do uncomfortable things. So we'll post more vids when I have anything interesting to say. Awesome, awesome. And I hope that you will share the, that painting that you made that I saw. And thank you for sharing it with me because it was absolutely wonderful. I, I, I'm so amazed. I can't believe it. Absolutely wonderful. So creative. Now, another term that I hear a lot from people is mind castle. And uh, so that's kind of cool, actually, in a way. Now, I like the idea of a castle or maybe a memory castle. Um, one of the things though to consider here is that are you doing this for your mind or are you doing it for your memory? And the reason why I personally make that distinction and why that distinction is very, very important to me is because I want to focus on memory. I do other things to focus on my mind like meditation and all these uh, kind of self-inquiry exercises and reading and all this kind of stuff. But when I want to use a memory technique that is for memory, then I want to call it by what it is. It's not a mind castle. It's not a mind palace. It's a memory palace. And then we are using the mental framework, the mental model that gets us most directly to what it is we're trying to do. Don't discount the importance of this in your own work because the frames and the metaphors that we use really do matter, really do matter. So that uh, is something to keep in mind. And you can ultimately just come up with your own uh, terms. So you could use mental palace or one of the things that I'll never forget, one of my first coaching clients, he, uh, you know, he said <laughs> he couldn't get with this memory palace term. He didn't like it, it just seemed to... Uh, too airy fairy to him, which is fine, fair enough. And I said, well, come up with whatever that, that gets you over this hump. Came back and he said, I'm going to call it apartments with compartments. Wow. Like, that is amazing. I love that. It not only rhymes, but it makes sense. You're compartmentalizing parts of an apartment. Makes sense. It's perfect. So uh, that's great. Uh, Lee says, going to post that painting later in our group. Excellent. Thank you. And that's an interesting distinction between memory and mind. Yeah, I really encourage people to put some thought into that. Uh, and the more that you think about the mental frameworks, the mental models that you have uh, going on, the more you're going to benefit, the more you're going to benefit. And the reason why you're going to benefit from that is because frameworks are super important. Think of how theater works, right? Like theater has a frame. Movies have a frame, the mise-en-scene. And they focus our attention on particular areas. Magicians do this too. They have this frame that they might move around in order to get you to have focused concentration and focused attention on particular things. We often think of that term misdirection, but we're not talking about misdirection in magic. We're talking about the focused attention on particular frames. And it's the same thing in life when we want to learn. If we keep saying things like, oh, this is difficult, or we have the wrong mental models, then we're literally putting this frame in a way that stacks the chips against us. But what we want to do is we want to actually have mental frames that help us move forward. And it's very, very simple. And we know about the expectation effect. So this matters. And what the expectation effect is, is that we essentially have our mental contents project out into the world and that helps create outcomes. So if you're an entrepreneur, for example, and you're hiring people, one of the best things you can do is have the mental frame of this is the best assistant that I ever are, am going to have and constantly think that. And uh, this is going to help. It's going to change your attitude, how you deal with that person, and it's going to project these things. This is not actual uh, fantasy or woo-woo, you can look this up. It's very, very important. Uh, and it's important that you do it in all things in your life, whatever you're studying and learning. Um, 
Sheik says, can you shed some light on the technique of mind mapping, how it differs from the mind palace or point me to the source? Well, first of all, Sheik, thanks for being here. Thanks for the question. Yes, I can. And uh, what I would recommend that you do is check out one of our previous videos on mind mapping and uh, one of my uh, book reviews of mind mapping by Tony Bizen, which is called Mind Map Mastery. So I'll send you the link for that in a second here. Please stand by. Uh, one of the things you're really going to love about this, uh, this particular uh, book and uh, distinction uh, between these techniques is that you can actually use mind mapping as a kind of memory palace. So make sure you read that in full and uh, see how that that all works and learn how to do it because it will be very, very beneficial for you. And uh, by the way, if you're joining us right now live, whoa, look at that. I did press the wrong button. Whoops, we see ourselves. <laughs> a little behind the scenes there. Um, sorry about that, guys. Um, if uh, you're joining us now live, hit the thumbs up. Let me know in the chat where you are in the world. And if you have questions as we go along, we'll catch up with them as we go along. Jamel is here. Says, good morning, Anthony. It's morning in Algeria. Great, great, great. So good to have you here. And uh, hope you enjoy today. All right. So mental frames matter. And uh, there's more. Like, we really want to define this technique. And so if we really want to get down to it, the reason I use Memory Palace and I prefer Memory Palace is partly because I'm sticking with St. Augustine with, you know, the palatial, vast space of memory as a treasure house of all the things that we want to store. I absolutely love that. I love the idea of it being palatial because palace, as opposed to castle, castle, you know, can be very stuffy, old, it's kind of a, you know... It's not my it's not my deal. Maybe yours, no problem. Uh, but I like the idea of something palatial, royal, rich, jewels of the kingdom. You know, uh, the royalty of of what you treat as the ne plus ultra. <laughs> you know that you really want to treasure in your mind as treasure, as the best, the best blood of knowledge. Right. That's why I always stick with the memory palace term. But at the end of the day, the best possible way to think about this, to think about this, I believe, is just to break it down to what it really is. The memory palace, the mind palace, the Roman room, the journey method or whatever, is a mnemonic. Just like every other mnemonic under the sun, except for it's the ultimate mnemonic. And the reason why is because it's a location-based mnemonic that actually uses location in the most dedicated way by pulling out your spatial mapping, your spatial memory. And it then allows you to use it strategically. And why that this uh, belongs to mnemonics in general is because anything that is a memory technique is a mnemonic. Mnemonics is a, an umbrella term under which everything falls that helps you uh, remember anything. So uh, looked at this way, even rote learning is a mnemonic technique. Uh, and index cards are mnemonic devices. But the thing is, is it has to do with how much you have optimized the actual process, the actual approach. And what this means is how strategic you are. So if you haven't taken the free course, make sure you go to magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT or click the link in the, de in the description uh, of this video below and make sure you, you take this and you understand that this is a spatial mapping technique that is based on what's already in your mind, helping you unpack existing competence in your spatial mapping. And then you can start to wrap around the other levels of meaning. And I want you to remember always Taylor's dictum and, uh, or the Taylor's dictum. Uh, and what you want to do is, I think I'll probably make this the motto of the Magnetic Mary Method, which is a pentagar quarry. Um, uh, oh, all of a sudden, I have a mind blip here. Hapentagar Cori. Oh, what the, how the hell heck does it go now? Hapentagar Cori. Um, no, I've got it right. I've got it wrong here. Uh, Megaston Hapentagar Cori. Um, Megaston Topos Hapentagar Cori. Sorry, I'm doing this late at night and uh, <laughs> had a little memory blip there. Megaston Topos Hapentagar Cori. So, um, what that means is that space is ultimate because it contains all things. And uh, 
it is uh, something that's very precious to me, even if when I'm tired, it's uh, <laughs> a little slow to come there. Uh, but I actually just visited the memory palace there, which is in the other room. And I was like, no, wait a second. It's a uh, Megatron from, from, uh, from the, uh, not the Terminator, the uh, Transformers. And uh, this, is a, this is actually a wonderful example of what happens when you're tired. But Megaston Topos, uh, so uh, there's a spinning top there, Megaston Topos, Hapanthagar Kori. Um, this was a little bit uh, tricky one, but I essentially have uh, a very, another favorite term of mine, which is uh, Hipax Legomenon there. And uh, what that represents, there's a visual I won't share it with you. And also the band Pantera. And then just a chorus. Uh, so, Hapanta Garkori. Megaston Topos Hapanta Garkori. Uh, space is ultimate because it contains all things. And I really meditate on that a lot because what you'll ultimately find, and what's really, really important, is that all memory techniques are spatial. And you really want to understand this in order to uh, get the best out of memory techniques. Uh, so acronyms are spatial. They're arranged spatially. They help you remember, but the, your reliance on them is that they are spatial and you trigger them off spatially. And you can also put acronyms in memory palaces. Uh, acrostics are spatial. The major system is spatial in nature. The more you understand this and dwell upon it, the better you're going to be at this. Uh, Lee says, I'm really big on mindset now, Anthony. Read Mindset by Carol Dweck. Very informative, distinguishing between fixed and growth mindset. Thank you for suggesting that, Lee. I know of her. I was on her email list for quite some time. And uh, Lee says, going to see Bumblebee tomorrow. Excellent. Yeah, Bumblebee, that's coming out. I wonder if it's here also tomorrow. I don't think we get it until the 20th or something like this. Um, in any case, I want to see Bumblebee as well. And uh, there's... Uh, something great about the whole Transformers world. And one of the greatest things about it is that even when you're tired, it can help you remember one of your favorite phrases that suddenly is a little bit lost in your head because you're tired. Uh, anyway, one of the things you want to just understand is that everything is spatial. The more you, the more that you uh, dwell upon this, the better you're going to be able to use it because all of your images are going to be to the left, to the right, to the up, down, diagonal to everything else. And then you can understand a lot more about how to use the mind palace and the memory techniques that are associated with it because they ultimately are all the same thing. And the more you realize that, the more you optimize the process and the practice. So how do you come to have these revelations that uh, improve your practice? Let me know if you'd like some book recommendations that might help you out in the chat here. I'm not going to share them if we don't have uh, some interest and excitement here. Uh, let me know, yes, you want to have some book recommendations, and uh, I will share with you some of these. Lee says, I dwell, therefore I am. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, radio silence. Oh my goodness, we might just, uh, we might just skip, the, uh, skip the book recommendations then. Um, nobody would like some. Interesting. Well, let me uh, say thank you to Maricella here. Maricella sent some nice uh, cups, Christmas cups. Thank you for that, Maricella. And uh, here's another one. And this one I really like because he reminds me of the evil Dr. Forget, which apparently has hold of all of our attendees right now. Here you are, evil Dr. Forget. Ooh, you've got a new friend. But this guy's smiling. This guy's got his evil face. All right. So, <laughs> Lee says, please give the book recommendations. All right, we've got Lee active uh, in the chat. Um, oh, Lee, uh, Maricella also sent uh, some nice tea. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Maricella. And uh, a very nice Christmas card here, too. Really appreciate that. All right. So, well, let's see here. That's all we get. We just get love from Lee. All right. Well, that's good enough because you are Lee. So there's really too many to list, quite frankly. Um, and uh, we're going to start with one that I think everybody needs to have on their shelf. Uh, <laughs> the, the evil doctor forget. So this is the memory book by Tony Buzan. And uh, this is a very special copy of the uh, memory book because... 
it's signed by Tony Buzan, and uh, there's a drawing I made inside of there, which he signed. So that's pretty cool. Um, and you're going to learn a lot from this book, and it's going to give you some wonderful ideas that uh, will stretch you, and it uh, helps you figure out how to exaggerate your images and use some of the things that that ultimately I have boiled down into a singular movement for the magnetic memory method that uh, uh, you see in more distinction here. And also there's a lot of nice uh, diagrams here that uh, break down the rhythms of how memory works and so forth. So there's that one. I also absolutely love this treasure of a memory training book, which is the memory workbook. And uh, that's uh, by Mark Shannon. So make sure that you have read this. Mark is a good friend, and uh, it's uh, been just absolutely wonderful learning so much from him over the years. And, you know, one of the great things about uh, this particular book, the Memory Workbook, is that it's also about just generally training your mind to work a lot better and a lot faster. So that's quite good. And um, let's see, what else do we have here? Well, one that I think has been pretty much my most uh, successful book, well, my second most successful book, I'd say, is this one, which is How to Learn and Memorize Math Numbers and Equations and Simple Arithmetic. And so you can check out that, which is very just focused on really getting this uh, memory palace technique down and understanding how it works and uh, understanding how that the major works in the context of a memory palace in ways that I don't really think are in other books. So you might want to check that out. And uh, let's see what else that we have here. Um, yeah, there's a copy of it over there. Show you this wonderful little thing. Well, you guys in this time zone sure are quiet. Let me know in the chat if, uh, if this is uh, just normal for you by continuing to be silent or uh, <laughs> wake up a little bit. The memory connection, this is another one. Now, this currently is uh, out, of available, uh, out of availability, but uh, we'll probably be bringing it back into availability in the very near future. It's a long story, but this is actually my most successful book. And... Uh, You'll really enjoy this once that you can get your hands on it. I recommend that. And uh, for historical interest, one of the books that I think is uh, well worth reading, and it won't really teach you that much about memory techniques, but it'll give you some ideas, is The Memory Palace of Matteo Ricci. And wow, this is super inspiring. And in fact, this book is the reason why that I'm in Australia today. Uh, so I am very grateful to that book. Harvinder says, I have the memory connection, <laughs> at least. Yes, you do, yes. Uh, thank you for being, you were one of the first, actually, to get it, so that's awesome. Lee says, I'll be adding them to my Christmas list. I don't know why, but I have an urge to learn equations also. Knowledge is power. Yeah, well, you have the video course there, uh, Lee, so you can grab that. Um, and uh, really appreciate uh, you guys and your interaction, and... The memory, can, the memory Code, I also recommend. This is for historical interest uh, by Lynn Kelly and really a beautiful, beautiful book and you'll learn a lot. And you'll learn more if you actually know and use memory techniques than if you don't. But Lynn is also doing a more dedicated book uh, and I believe it's probably well on its way to publication now since the, I last heard. And so... Um, I think that you'll you'll find a great value of that. So uh, I just wanted to mention those books because I, I don't uh, talk about books enough uh, and the time that I normally do are on uh, the private webinars. So for more recommendations and you won't, if you want to get invited to our webinars, make sure to go first to magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT and that will uh, be a great way for you to start uh, enjoying those. Um, and then we go through the many more books that I think you're going to find super powerful and uh, unlock the secrets that are in them for people. Lee says, that's a nice looking book by Lynn. Yeah, and uh, you know, one of the things 
that's so great about it is that there are beautiful, beautiful photographs in them. And it turns out that many of the photographs are by Ian Rowland, who is a very well established uh, mentalist. And I was talking earlier about, you know, how important mental frames are. And he has some great lessons about how important mental frames are in some of his work. And one of my favorite books of his is called The, the Full Facts Book of Cold Reading. So uh, I highly recommend that you check that out at some point in your journey. I no longer have a physical version, but he was very kind to me back in the day because I ordered one of his physical versions. And uh, for whatever reason, the glue fell apart in the spine and he sent another one. So that was cool. Um, all right. So those were some book recommendations. And... Uh, Thanks uh, for the for the shout out there on those. Let's talk about some of the training secrets for using whatever you want to call it. The memory palace, the mind palace, the Roman room, the journey method, apartments with compartments. And uh, really what it comes down to is how you're going to use it. So definitions are great, but um, we want to talk about how that uh, how that this is going to work. So one of the biggest secrets is it's not one memory palace. It's multiple memory palaces, and we need to create multiple memory palaces. I don't know anyone who has done significant memory work for learning or for competition that doesn't have multiple memory palaces. This is really, really important to unlock the fullest potential for your spatial mapping that you have, and to do that is also to unlock autobiographical memory, uh, it's a, it's to unlock figural memory, procedural memory, it unlocks episodic memory, and then this is what helps you weave multiple levels of memory together. And this is literally all happening in your, your neurochemical bath in your brain. And the more that you do this continuously and then use the memory palaces as quickly as possible, then the more you're going to have skills with all these multiple levels of memory. And this is really, really important for establishing a solid practice as quickly as possible. So the real secret here is not to rely on one memory palace. And so many people try to get away with one memory palace. Another secret here is to always understand the value of creating these memory palaces as a brain exercise in and of itself. So you're never wasting time, even if you don't use them. You're always increasing the amount of spatial memory that you have access to and exploring your memory further. And you're reviving a lot of the uh, neural networks and, you know, your synapses and your dendrites that may have been, you know, out of use to the point that they're kind of rigid and you're getting more flexibility out of them. And all of this lends itself to having way, way, way more greater success in life in general, because your brain is actually a physical thing. And the more you're using it, the more you are reviving the cells if they have been laying dormant, or the more that you are um, actually um, <laughs> bringing them to life and they may never have been used before. So that's why it can be a bit of a stretch in the beginning, but everybody I know, they feel like they loosen up, they limber up, and they start to feel better and better. One of the reasons why you'll feel better and better if you do it consistently is because you're going to start to create myelin in your brain and you're going to get more opioids going. And when you start to use the memory palaces and you remember this information that seems so sh shocking to you, it's going to create dopamine. So when you get dopamine and other opioids plus myelin starting to wrap around the the uh, neuronal sheaths and connect your synapses together as the positive and negative ions are flowing through them, it just feels really great. So this is really, really important. And you don't get this if you don't create multiple memory palaces. So always remember this one rule is that one is a very dangerous number if you want to excel at the mind palace or the memory palace technique. The next thing I would suggest here is that you have a meaningful goal. And so one of the problems with, uh, with a lot of memory training books, and uh, I certainly have some around here that I, I, I won't uh, show now, but they uh, suggest memorizing a shopping list or <laughs> random words or whatever. This makes zero sense in most cases because who has this as a meaningful goal to memorize their shopping list? Maybe some people do. If you're doing it in a foreign language, totally makes sense. But if it's just in your own language, like, couldn't you find something a little bit more meaningful there? Because 
this is why this matters and understand this. We've just talked about opioids, we've talked about myelin, and we've talked about dopamine. Well, imagine the dopamine spike as being a, necessis, a necessity to getting a quick victory that gives you energy, more energy than you're burn, burning, so that you're excited to use your memory every single day. Well, imagine the dopamine spike of meaningless information. Wow, I memorized that. You get a bit of novelty. Maybe there's a bit of norepinephrine that is uh, generated from the novelty versus, oh my goodness, I just memorized 10 words of a foreign language. Whoa, right? Uh, we had a person named Marsha who just from one of my trainings uh, over a week did, or less than a week really, did 52 words overnight in uh in in irish uh uh so and she's an older uh individual and she just was like wow my brain feels so alive and that's that's a lot and what i love about that is that 52 is also the, the number of uh, cards in a deck of cards and also the 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 uh, number of weeks in a year and just bam but it's a meaningful goal you see so the fact that she has so much meaning and also her previous belief was because of her age, she wasn't going to be able to do this. Uh, this creates phenomenal amounts of positive brain chemistry that can not only create more energy than you burn, but as long as you keep going and then you make sure that you do a couple of other things, then you're going to fall in love with this and you're going to get positively addicted to it in the best possible way. So hit the ground running with a meaningful goal. Why do some students struggle with this, even though they have a meaningful goal? It's because they don't really want the outcome that they're getting from a degree. And so, you know, you might be going to medical school to please your parents. And that's why all the memory techniques under the sun, they may still work, but they might not create this dopamine spike because there's no truth in it. It's not really the information that is meaningful to you. It's what you're doing out of social obligation, family obligation, and so forth. So that can be a barrier despite your best intentions. Keep that in mind. And then make a meaningful goal with information that will create this uh, dopamine spike of meaning so that you're encouraged to go onward with the techniques. And then you can transfer it over to the medical terminology if you're going to medical school to please other people, uh, as that case may be. So I hope that uh, helps you out wherever you are because you really can find something that is more meaningful uh, that you can transfer over to less meaningful things if that's what you need to do. Uh, Lee says, I do feel like my mind ha had calcified a bit and looking forward to massaging the neurons back into life. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, everybody has these periods. I certainly did, and I'm so glad I found these techniques. And it's just been getting more and more alive as we speak. I'm looking forward to getting old. And uh, I've talked about aging a little bit with Brad Zup on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast. And so I think he and I are pretty much the same age. And it's fascinating to me to go into this uh, career continually aging and tr 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 just tracking the differences in my own experience and uh, really keeping the brain alive as we go and feeling it becoming more and more alive all the time even if you encounter certain things like when you're tired and so forth, which are interesting effects, but then being like, wow, still get that back. Amazing. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, and uh, sometimes when you when you forget things, it's not really about the memory techniques. It can be blood sugar level. It can be time of day, tiredness, amount of activity during the day. Uh, we have something called reserve, memory reserve. And all of these things can, uh, can be depleted over the day. And I normally don't do you uh, live streams at this time of day precisely because just human and depleted, but I'm always pleased by how these uh, techniques do serve when you call upon them. So Uriah says, that does help a lot. Thank you. Well, thank you for letting me know, Uriah. I really appreciate that. Love when you guys are active. If you're joining us now, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world. And uh, if you have any questions, now is the time to pop them out, whatever they may be. And Lee has a question here. How long does it take to read a normal size book? That's a good question. And the first thing I would just say is, what do you mean by normal size? Because uh, I'm not sure what normal size is. I mean, so many books are so many different pages, and it depends on the outcome, on the goal. So there are books that are this big, 120 pages, 170 pages, that will take me longer because of the nature of the, the information. And then there are books that might be 500 pages that I can read in two days. So a lot has to do with what normal means. But... Uh, you know, 
just to take some of the books that we have had here with us today. Um, well, for example, look, here's a very, very short book. And uh, this is 101 Top Tips for Better Mind Maps by Phil Chambers. And uh, this book, as short as it is, as, is not, not only did I savor it and take a long time reading it, but I read it again and again and again to help uh, with my own memory improvement journey. And uh, so that really I spent probably two weeks the first time I was reading it, and I just keep going back to it again and again and again. Um, then this book here, which is called Rest, which I highly recommend by Alex Sujong King Pang. I've got to um, get him on the podcast, you know, because this is such a good book. This is, uh, it's, whew, I don't know, 300 pages, probably something like this. Yeah, 301 pages. Uh, this took about two two days, uh, basically. Uh, and I just gobbled it down. I need to reread it. Um, and, you know, I don't have it here, but sometimes I have these notebooks inside of the books, and I took a lot of notes from this, and I typed up all my notes uh, to eventually do a, um, a a book review and maybe just have him on the podcast if, uh, if I can get hold of him. So that is, I didn't actually track exactly how long that took, but it took a... Uh, took as long, uh, uh, no more than, than three days or, th you know, maybe four sittings over three days, something like that. So great question, but ultimately it has to do with the goal. And like I just finished reading The Yoga of Love by James Swartz, and I was reading this over, I don't know, probably the better part of a month. And one of the reasons why is because even though it's really, really thin, it's just so wow, I got to stop and think about this <laughs> for a while and not plow through it because it's not just about information, but it's it's about contemplation. So anything that requires contemplation, I, I will take my time with it. And, you know, another book that is well worth contemplating is uh, Maps of Meaning. So this, uh, you know, is not... And one of the book reviews of Maps of Meaning, it actually says, I read this after I was... I read the book review after I read Maps of Meaning, but it said this is not a book to just plow through. Like you don't even want to read it in one sitting. You want to take your time with it. So that's really important. So I hope that answers your, your question, Lee. But uh, uh, you say that's good to know, Anthony, that you go back often sometimes to absorb the book. Yeah, and like one of the things that I'm doing right now is I'm rereading the Atma Bodha to memorize it. And uh, so... This is quite uh, an interesting adventure because I'm memorizing uh, Rupa Gita selections from uh, Evolving Beyond Thought by Gary Weber. Almost done now, uh, getting close to the, to the end, which is a very exciting feeling. Then I'm memorizing uh, Upadesa Saram, and then I'm starting to memorize parts. Well, I'm, I'm probably memorize the whole thing of Atma Bodha. Um, and so just revisiting it, taking my time, really just taking it one sip at a time, which you see on the screen here, which is studying these techniques, implementing the techniques, and practicing with the information that improves your life. Push comes to shove. Obviously, if I had an exam, I would would, would not necessarily want to take my time in quite the same way. So what I would do is uh, have the strategy that you have access to in the Magnetic Memory Method Master Plan course, which covers uh, textbook memorization in a very detailed way and how to structure your time. All of it comes down to having a meaningful goal. So my own goals with these, these texts uh, have to do with um, learning about Advaita Vedanta, which I'm learning about in great depth now and enjoying so much about this journey into this uh, tradition I never even heard of before and me memorizing essentially three texts from it at the same time while also reading around it extensively to create deeper neuronal connections and just understand it while picking up all this Sanskrit along the way. Um, and speaking of Sanskrit, if you haven't checked out that little tutorial uh, we released the other day, there is one on YouTube about memorizing Sanskrit. All right, so if you're joining us now, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world. We're curious about whether this is a good time of day for people. And uh, your interactions, your activity tells me whether we should be doing this more at this time of day for you. Uh, and uh, your engagement will be the answer. Uh, and uh, it's always an interesting time because you get to see me when I'm a little bit tired <laughs> and less energetic. So 
Lee says, was looking through the review of The Fire of Self-Knowledge that you recommend. Also sounds like my type of book. So many books to read. Yeah, there are so many books to read. I love to read a lot, read extensively. And one of the ways that you can learn to read faster, for example, is just to keep reading. And you'll find that you do read faster so long as you read consistently, thoroughly, and read different kinds of books. It'll really keep those neurons and the reading muscles sharp. Sergio is here in London. Thanks for saying hello, Sergio. Nice to meet you. And uh, if you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know you're active, you're engaged, you appreciate this kind of material because uh, we're looking for more people like Edgar the Elephant who really want to learn, who love the possibilities of learning together in a live setting through the magic of the internet. And uh, we need to hear from you. We need to know that you are alive and kicking and not just cell phone zombies who don't really care and are just passive, you know, uh, data for later kind of people, um, which is fine, too, if that's you. It doesn't really matter, but we definitely need all of uh, all of you to uh, to who are active to obviously show your activity so that we have those dopamine spikes I was talking about earlier and uh, really uh, am, are motivated to serve. Or else the evil doctor forget will get our souls <laughs> and our leg our suffering right Lee will be legendary even in hell where not even those fires can melt the evil doctor forget because he has power even there so this is that is called dude says it's Nepal thank you for saying wow Nepal excellent good to hear that people from Nepal care about memory uh, wonderful wonderful I know people in Mongolia really care about memory. I don't know if we've met anyone on from Mongolia on our lives. Uh, Oin is here listening from Da Nang, Vietnam. Excellent. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, maybe you can spell a transliteration of Oin. Pratik is here from India. Great. Thank you guys for being alive and kicking. Really appreciate that. Uh, and again, you know, anybody that you care about who is doing teaching, uh, for you, for your benefit, let them know that you're engaged and that you appreciate it because that's what keeps them going and uh, gives them ideas too for what that uh, they might uh, they might create for you. But you've got to let them know. And this is the beauty of the internet, but the internet is in dark days and very challenged. So you need to help keep it alive. So chicken with wine, everything will be fine. I love that name, man. That's awesome. <laughs> from india well hello from india chicken with wine everything will be fine i love that excellent name abraham says it's abraham from oregon thanks for being here abraham and thanks for saying hello oregon wow so well i'm originally from the vancouver area and that's not that far away probably similar weather and territory lee is reading sapient a brief history of humankind by yuval noah harari i haven't read that but he seems really cool i flipped through a couple of his uh, two of his other books, uh, but not that one, in uh, bookstores and heard, uh, I think, all of his episodes on uh, Sam Harris's Waking Up podcast, which was awesome. Um, <laughs> so that is called Dude Says Love From Us. Pratik asks, how to develop photographic memory? Sir, please guide me. I'm in India. Great. We'll catch up with that question in a second here, but thanks for that question. Uh, Zazel says, love your videos. Thanks, thanks, thanks for that. Uh, glad about that. Thanks for letting me know. And the more you let me know, the more we keep making them. So if you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Make sure you get active in the uh, chat here. Really appreciate it. Um, let's see. That is called Dude. Just received the second Memory Palace email. Great. That's from the free course. Go to magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT if you don't have it. The link is down below as well. Um... Sergio says, still not motivated to do the first PDF of memory palaces. Well, let me know how I can motivate you. I don't have a whip, but uh, <laughs> whatever uh, whatever it takes, get in there. Uh, I just need you to kick me in the butt. Well, you know that uh, I charge $300,000 an hour for kicking people in the butt. So just imagine that amount of, <laughs> of, of pain to pay that and let that kick you in the butt because if you think about what memory techniques can do for you, you can probably add at least that much uh, to your income very, very quickly if you would just become the master of your domain. What's one of the best ways to become the master of your domain? 
make sure you remember what it is that you need to remember and you remember the names of the people that you meet so that you're a highly distinguished individual who speaks highly in your diction, who has a great vocabulary, who can remember the names of the people that you meet and you can very, very clearly express your expertise in your domain. When you do that, you will succeed more and it will be worth so much to you. And you won't need anybody to kick you in the butt because you will be the man who is in control of your domain or the woman in control of your domain because you have control over your mind and you'll be able to motivate yourself. So I would encourage you to think about the brain chemicals that are involved in this. And uh, if you have to hire a coach, do it. It'll be worth every penny provided that you resonate with that coach and, and it's the right coach for you. And, uh, you know, I've had coaches in my life. It's worth every penny. I've uh, Not just coaches, but personal teachers to just get it done. <laughs> Sergio says, that did it. All right, so you got it. Uh, and whatever it takes. I mean, carrot stick, there's lots of things. And if you haven't been on one of our webinars, make sure that you do. And take every opportunity because there's more motivational tips there for you. And you are very welcome. Thank you for saying thank you. Um, let's see. So Owen says, rereading Mastery by George Leonard. Big picture of mastering a skill, not just learning skills. No, I don't know a Mastery by George Leonard. But thanks for mentioning it. I'll put it into the Google device and see if I can't get that uh, heading on over if it looks great for me. I love your guys sharing your um, your book recommendations with me as well. Uh, and I, I do often manage to get them read as well. So Lee has read that, that book, Mastery, many times. You say you went around your entire atelier to inspire people. Such an opening book was I was the obsessive dabbler. Yeah, being an obsessive dabbler can get you back. Back to, um, you know, back to square one <laughs> many, many times. This is one of the, uh, the things that's so important is that we need to become masters of something. One thing is usually what we need to focus on. And then we can become masters of other things uh, because of the one thing. All right. So thanks, everybody, for being active and letting me know you appreciate this. And again, if you're just joining us now, hit the thumbs up. Let me know in the world where you're at. And uh, if you're watching the replay, also make use of that discussion area to let me know that you uh, appreciate this and what comments and questions you have for future videos uh, and future live streams. So Fugu is here. You're doing great. Keep making more videos. Thanks for that. Really appreciate that. Um, all right, so let's carry on here with some more Memory Palace and Mind Palace training secrets. Because one of the things you're going to love is when you do find that dedication and that devotion and you want to have those dopamine spikes and you want to build the myelin involved in habit formation and you want to get the other opioids going for yourself, set a timer and just sit down and memorize. And whatever it is, if it's foreign language vocabulary, if you're doing some work with numbers, set a timer, sit down, and then go deep with the information that's gonna improve your life. What does deep mean? It means define your outcome, establish how you're gonna do it in your memory palaces, exercise with the information that improves your life, and then actually practice the practice of doing all this, right? And this is gonna create this wonderful thing uh, that is this chemical bath of all these mixtures of uh, dopamine and opioids and myelin and you know you might get other things like norepinephrine going on norepinephrine is uh, tends to be triggered by novelty so the more new information that you're memorizing is going to create that novelty effect so that's why you know i'm just like adding another line adding another line until i get to the to the end of to the end of uh, a text but if I feel like I'm getting stale, and this is one of the reasons why I'm memorizing three texts at the same time, I just switch to another one, spend a little bit of time with that one, get it all spiked up, enjoy it, and then go back to the uh, other one and then add a third one and so on. So this, this variation is helping trigger a bit of norepinephrine to get that novelty effect in place. And then, you know, I keep going and just set a timer so that you're actually spending the time and sit there. One of the tricks with setting timers for your mind palace or memory palace training is if you think you can focus on this for 10 minutes, set your timer for eight minutes. This is something I heard from Tim Ferriss. And uh, 
I put that into practice with my own meditation at first, and then I added it here. Now, here's an additional little tip. If you're memorizing anything that involves just individual words or individual numbers, get some dice and just roll the dice. And so if you roll a seven, then just memorize seven pieces of information. If you roll a two, memorize just two pieces of information and then take a break. Come back if you want to memorize more, but let this sort of randomness create novelty for you in your daily practice. It's very powerful. I've been, I've been teaching that for years and uh, the people who put that into practice, they say they love this. It helps them crave uh, the practice and the technique because it gives us a little bit of surprise element and chance and randomness within structure. Because one of the problems that we have is we get bored with structure even though we need structure in order to get anywhere with our training goals. So how do you get the best of both worlds? How do you have randomness inside of structure? With dice. And I saw this technique again with Lars, uh, who was my personal trainer, in uh, Berlin for fitness because we would do this this particular routine and it, it would be like, well, how many push-ups are we going to try to get done? Because you do like some push-ups and then you do some pull-ups and then maybe you do uh, some squats or whatever. And it'd be like, how many numbers are we going to do? And he had this app and you touch the app and the dice would roll and then you'd have the number of the dice and then that's how many we would do. And uh, it was a really neat way of just keeping it fresh, keeping it fresh. And that's really important. And one of the reasons why it's important is because we do have a need for novelty. So we do need structure, but you can have novelty within structure. So set a timer, roll the dice, and just work with that number. And uh, you can always come back and do more if you roll a, 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 a small number. But this is going to help rig the game in your favor over time when you're consistent day after day after day. So Lee says, that's very interesting. It makes a lot of sense. So easy for things to become stale. It is, it is, yeah. And uh, you know, another thing that you can do is you can do things like backwards. So I often start with the Ribhu, then I go to Upadesa, then I go to Atma. But then you, one day you just come and you go to Atma, and then you go to, not to Upadesa, but then to Ribhu, and then to, you know, you just vary it around. And it's just super powerful, super powerful. Same thing with my writing, you know, like, oh, well, I just have this little bit of variation. So everything I do in my own work, we've got the podcast, we got the blog, we got the YouTube, all this sort of stuff. Like it just works because I can focus on this and then I can do a little bit of that and a little bit of that, but it's all within a structure. It's all within a structure and it doesn't ultimately really matter the order because the order can be varied for novelty. And that's what it's just keeps on, you know, triggering my own brain chemistry, which is why I always have so much fun and uh, enjoy this so much. If you're enjoying this, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Let me know in the chat where you're from. And uh, if you're new here and you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit subscribe. We help mature learners who like to take mental adventures with their minds and learn and remember anything to their heart's desire and to do it in a way that uh, really, really helps them. All right, so we got some questions coming in here. Um, so Pratik is a speed reader. His speed is 400 words per minute with 75% retention. Congratulations, man. That's pretty cool. Uh, Lee says, I would always quit when it got too hard, not realizing it what it took to achieve mastery. Well, that's what we're going to talk about with this challenge frustration curve. Um, Hamad says, hello, how are you? Hello, Hamad. Thanks for saying hello. Sergio asks, will this work with learning lines? Absolutely. Anything you have to memorize. By lines, I assume you mean lines for acting or in a play. Let me know a little bit more about what you mean by lines. Put it this way. If it's information, you can memorize it. And this is the way to do it. So take the free course to find out how at magneticmarymethod.com forward slash YT and uh, dive in. Now, Sergio confirms, yes, acting is kind of a special thing. And so then the question is, is it for stage or is it for screen? And one of the things that we want to um, we want to focus on when we're actors, and I've done some acting, so uh, I, I know a little bit about this practically. I've done acting for screen and for uh, the stage. And, you know, there's lots of memory tools that you can use. So depending on where you're actually acting, you can certainly use the blocking to help actually trigger off those images uh, that when you step there to help you remember, but that's not really the greatest strategy. You want to have it all memorized 
in advance. And when you know, if you if you're new uh, or you're just here and you didn't see the beginning, like this, this at the beginning of this, I'm quite tired and uh, I couldn't recall this line for some reason. A little bit of a brain slip. I just went in my mind to the memory palace. But normally it just comes like this: Megaston Topos of Pentagar Cori. Like it's just it's well known to me. And yet there's this little slip. And then I was just like, "Well, where's the memory palace? Oh yeah, yeah. There, you know." And then you you get it back. But in acting, you know, you kind of want to not have that effect. You want it to just come naturally. Uh, but at the same time, the things that come out of you in acting, what is natural, right? Uh, so Robert De Niro is actually quite famous for having index cards with him. And so, you know, his theory is, is that he wouldn't have any of the lines memorized because he needs to be natural. He has to answer with what he'd be thinking in that moment or as close to the moment as as uh, after action is called. So he has uh, these cards and he will literally sit there with his cards the, and they'll have him in his lap. And when the director says, just before the director says action, he'll be like, and then action. And he'll say, no, Cindy, that's not what I meant. And so he's really got the mental content that he needs to deliver in the second before he needs to deliver it. So that's a very interesting thing to keep in mind. Acting is not necessarily memory. It's not always memory. From the stage, obviously it is. And so one of the things that you want to consider, and we teach this in the FAQ section of the masterclass, is Chekhov's body and then how to use his various segmentations of the body combined with attitude and motivation. And, you know, Chekhov had some cool stuff. And how you can use that in combination with a memory palace, but not for the precise purpose of using the memory palace while you're on stage acting, but using the memory palace to weave it together with your character so that you already have it memorized and should push come to shove and you need to use a memory palace in real time, you can do it like that. So this is uh, great. All right. So I uh, hope that helps you out, uh, Sergio. Uh, so yeah, don't worry about hogging the chat. Hog it, man. <laughs> It's all yours. That's what we're here for. This is a public service that we do. Obviously, we are here to, um, to, to help encourage you to invest some time in our free training at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT and really unlock the fullest possible powers of your mind. And, you know, everything costs time and focus and attention. And this is one of the best investments in your time, focus and attention that you'll ever make because when you get these techniques, you're pretty much bulletproof and you just got to follow the truth of your passion in life and memorize the information that improves your life. And you will get where you need to go faster than you ever think is possible. It'd probably make your head spin, but in a good way, good way. Rational Dietetics is here checking in from the Netherlands. All right. Thank you for being here, Sten. Really great to see you. JA is here, says the best wizard of Oz. Yeah. <laughs> One of these days I might write a book called The Wizard of Memory. We'll see. Um, let's see. So Pratik says, does the military method of memorizing work? Never heard of the military method of memorizing. So post a link for me, send it to me by email, and I'll have a check and I'll try it if it sounds attractive and interesting to do. And if anybody here knows what the military method is, do please explain. <laughs> Sergio says, another kick in the butt for me. Yeah, there you go. Cha-ching! You're making me rich here, man. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Lee says, with my meditation routine, I found myself missing days because I would rigidly sit there for a set time. But now I just sit until I no longer want to. Great, great. I mean, sitting just to sit is a powerful thing. I did it for years. I'll be talking a lot about sitting just to sit in my upcoming book. So stay tuned for news about that uh, coming soon. I'm nearly getting done the first draft. Hopefully be done by the end of the year. Well, actually hoping. No, we don't hope too much uh, planning, but I'm not putting too much pressure upon myself because I've got a lot of things to do, and uh, I want this to be the best book. If you haven't heard the uh, chapter that I read, it's on one of our previous live streams, and you can go back for that. So, au revoir, Harvinder. Thanks for being here. A bientôt. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, good to see you, as always. Thank you for saying hello, for being active, and... Uh, <laughs> A bientôt, mes amis. Great to see you. Um, wow, I don't really use too much French, uh, but uh, that's great. Good to see you here. 
So good to see you. Uh, Harvinder is one of my favorite people, uh, for sure. Uh, good to see you. All right, so uh, au revoir, and uh, have a great, great day. Uh, J.A. says the major method for military. Yeah, that might be it. All right, so Pratik had a question about photographic memory. Listen, man, there's no such thing as photographic memory. It's not even a particularly good metaphor. So think about a better meta metaphor. Yeah, I was looking for it the other day. I can't seem to find it anymore, but there was a PDF of the NASA debunking of photo photographic memory and photo reading and all that jazz. Uh, there's just better processes, better ways of thinking about what it is that you want to do. Um, eidetic memory you know, might be a thing for kids and so forth. I don't really think that uh, it makes that much sense to chase after. Lee says, I think the military method is sitting in a dark room and flashing light on and off in a split second at some text, then seeing an afterglow. Meant to get a, uh, a photograph. Well, maybe. <laughs> sounds, uh, sounds like a recipe for burning out your, burning out your eyes. Oh, just causes pain just to think about it. <laughs> Flashing for, is for semaphore. All right, so who here thinks that sitting in a room that is dark and flashing a light at some text is a good learning strategy? Who comes up with this? Maybe I'll try it. I don't know. Um, here's the thing, though. If you want to memorize information and you don't want to sit there and do it with rote learning, what's the most likely path? The most likely path is to just think about what you already know and then associate it with what you don't know. And to make that association so ridiculous and so profound and vibrant in your mind that you're going to have a hard time forgetting it, right? And this is an, uh, an art, it's a craft. And you're going to find that uh, if you practice it, it's going to work really well for you. You might have to practice it a little bit more than other people have to do. There are some stories of legend where, you know, Ben Pridmore apparently read two chapters of a book, and then he went and won the World Memory Championships. And, uh, uh, you know, that's great. <laughs> There's that. That might that, That's not everybody, though. Um, so some people might need to do uh, a little bit more. Um, so that's what we're really looking for. And understand that everything is association. So spatial memory with, through the, through the my, uh, mind palace or the memory palace, um, this is association. You're, you're using your association with space that you already know, and then you're layering on imagery that you already know with what you don't know. And your speed with this comes from your practice. And some people just hit the ground running. Other people, they need to do a little bit more. Look, I had to do quite a bit, and uh, I still practice practically every single day, and it's just that simple. I don't even know that I'm going to try to sit in a dark room with a flashlight and try to burn an imprint of some words in my eyes when not only is that deeply unpleasant, uh, just the thought of it is unpleasant, but even if it did work, how is that supposed to create long-term memory that's going to work? Uh, and so Pratik is saying that Nikola Tesla, Vivekananda had photographic memory. How do you know? How do you know? If you really think that this is true, tell me how you can demonstrate that this is true. And even if it were true, what does it have to do with us? And what does it have to do with you? Uh, I give you a little bit of tough love on this because people tell me lots of things about, for example, Vivekananda. And so much of it is just not even possible to know. And they claim that they know it, and they're not even honest and integral enough human beings to admit that they, what they're claiming cannot be known by them, right? So uh, great if you're an admirer of him, that's fine, but uh, uh, we really focus on things that can be demonstra demonstrably true, true and make sense. So uh, there we go. All right, so... And uh, J.A. is right. Caps lock is indeed hard on the eyes. So um, we appreciate your uh, your participation, of course. But uh, uh, we don't uh, necessarily, you know, need to have it all shouting. We're not going to 
uh, be able to give you photographic memory because it doesn't exist. And uh, for anybody here who is going to flash lights in their eyes in the dark room, please see a doctor first uh, and, and ensure that you actually want to cause potential retinal damage to yourself because that sounds, uh, sounds like a, a bad idea. Now, the other thing that you mentioned uh, about retaining your fluids and so forth, that might make sense, actually. Uh, there was an interesting comment about FAP, uh, no FAP for people who want to uh, improve their memory on the, the, this channel on a previous video. And I have been thinking about whether I want to do a no FAP video and, uh, or not uh, to encourage people. But at the end of the day, um, that's up to you. And, and there's certainly something to it. Uh, we know that, you know, a lot of boxers will, will, will retain, uh, these particular fluids and they'll do that to improve concentration and focus and really, you know, build up their, uh, <laughs> build up their, <laughs> <laughs> they're je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what, uh, <laughs> but they're boxers, right? So they already have, uh, I don't know, je ne sais quoi. Uh, but in any case, <laughs> J.A., try some E.E. E. Cummings, man. That's great. Yeah, Pratik, uh, we do recommend, uh, we do recommend E.E. E. Cummings at all times, uh, regardless of your capitalization uh, practices. So, Sergio, I don't know what you mean by I am here, but I love your proclamation for Mark Shannon. Mark Shannon is the man, for sure. Love that guy, and uh, can't, I hope to see him again because uh, we had great times the last time we were together. Uh, all right. So, Lee says he loves tough love, and... Uh, <laughs> you guys are hilarious. That's great. I uh, love this. Robert Frost too. Yeah, Robert Frost. Um, well, let's talk about... Uh, Pratik says, I say in capital letters as it's easier to read. For Not for native English speakers, Pratik. It's actually very difficult for native English speakers uh, to read, and I imagine native German speakers and, uh, and others as well, French speakers. Um, romantic language speakers, uh, people who generally use the Latinate alphabet speakers, quite, uh, quite difficult. But we certainly appreciate that if you have that in your um, cultural background, uh, that, that's great, but it's not for us. All right, so um, yeah, I don't have any problem with practicing celibacy. I don't know that it uh, will help improve your memory. I don't, I don't, and I'm, I'm very confident that it won't lead to photographic memory. Um, and, uh, if you want the best possible memory, train it the way that people have been training it for thousands of years with a memory palace and, uh, you know, with information that improves your life. It's pretty simple. So let's see. Rational dietetics says, I'm currently drawing a memory palace of the floor of my school where I follow most of my lessons, but I want to remember the rest of the floors. The problem is that there are eight floors and the school is formed like a coliseum and they all look the same. How can we remember things that look very similar? Great, interesting question. Um, so one of the things that you want to uh, consider, Stan, is that um, do you have to use all of it? That's the, that's the first thing. And uh, then... If they're so similar, then how can you break it down to its simplest possible elements? Uh, so, for example, like even if it's a Colosseum shape, what we want to do is, you know, think about, okay, so if there's a perfect circle, right? Well, what common things do circles have? Circles have in common cardinal points, right? So the most northern point, the most southern point, the most eastern point, the most western point. So there's one thing, right? Now, if every floor is the same, then can you impose orange on, on one floor? Can you impose yellow on another floor? Uh, can you impose green? And so on. I personally would alphabetize the colors so that you just don't have to think too much about what comes next. And uh, that uh, is a strategy for you. So I hope that helps those two suggestions, the cardinal points and uh, 
differentiating by color. There's many other ways to do it. Actually, since there are eight floors, I think you said there, um, the, uh, the strategy you might want to do is um, just to assign a major method from your 00, zero to 99 that will, uh, will help um, make sure that you can just think about the number and say, you know, your 01 is a tragedy mask or whatever the case might be. And this will uh, trigger what that floor is. Second floor can be the sun floor. The third floor can be the, you know, the Sam I am floor or whatever. Um, that can help a, a lot for you. Um, so that uh, is a way to do that. Uh, Sten says, interesting perspective. Can definitely work with that. Excellent, excellent. Um, yeah, well, so rational dietetics says, I don't have to remember it, but because it's so big, there is just a lot of potential for... Uh, memory palaces. Yeah, that's a that's a thing. Uh, but potential doesn't doesn't really mean loss if you don't use it, right? So always keep that in mind. Sometimes we need to let things go in order to maximize what we have. Uh, Eighty twenty rule is is important and useful. Uh, so Pratik asked about best food for memory. There's a link for you that is a little bit of a masterclass in best foods for memory. If you saw a previous live stream, I actually have the update on this in terms of an elimination diet and a rotation diet. And we read that chapter on a live stream from a couple days ago. So you can check that out, Pratik, and uh, get active in the discussion box, even though it's no longer live. You can still ask uh, any further questions there. And I highly recommend that you listen to that. I don't know who here may have heard that chapter. And, uh, you know, if you guys are really active and you would like, I might read you another chapter from the book. But I got to see some love about that and some interest uh, a little bit more than we had previously because you guys were asleep like zombies. And if you're here now and you're new and you're fresh and you weren't here before, um, uh, let me know in the chat where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking, and... Uh, yeah, maybe we read another chapter. Maybe we don't. Uh, J.A. says, some f say fish is best because fish swim in schools. Yeah, ultimately, at the end of the day, you got to have a... Uh, you got to have a understanding of yourself and so forth. Uh, so let's talk about the challenge frustration curve. That gets back to something that Lee was mentioning earlier. And uh, so basically... When we get challenged, we don't want to quit. We want to scale back. So, or sorry, well, I should put this differently. When we get frustrated, we don't want to quit. We want to scale back, but we always want to make sure we're challenged. And the challenge frustration curve is, is exactly a thing that you see when people are trying to become top performers, trying to excel at a skill. They'll hit a ceiling of complexity that causes frustration and then they'll just drop off and they're gone. And some people, they drop off so quick. They try once and they get frustrated once and they're gone. So what you need to do is you need to understand, wait a second, I just can go back to being slightly challenged. And nobody can, like unless you want to have high paid coaching with somebody, nobody but you can really figure out this curve. And you've just got to always pay attention to it. Always pay attention to it. So um, really, really important to do that. Uh, so that's, uh, that's important. Uh, so that's the challenge frustration curve. Nothing much more to it than that. And then really the DOC principle is that doing is the ultimate thing. So if you want to get good at memory palaces, you have to do them. And, uh, doing is the origin of the creativity that you need for memory work. Because as we said earlier, not only is it that you unlock spatial memory and autobiographical memory, figural memory, episodic memories, semantic memory, and all sorts of memory uh, chemicals in your brain, but you also, when you do consistency, DOC is also consistency, you get that myelin, you get the opioids, you get the dopamine spikes, and you get them consistently because you're consistent about doing it, and you get all kinds of wonderful things. The doing is where it all is. Um, so Pratik says, I know best memory food is ghee, uh, from an Indian cow is best. Well, ghee, yeah, I used to put ghee in my bulletproof coffee, which was, uh, interesting. 
Only Lee wants a book chapter. Lee, man, we might be doing things just for you tonight. Uh, <laughs> that's it. We just got one. I appreciate that, Lee. One is uh, one is a wonderful number, even if it's a dangerous one when it comes to memory palaces. So make sure that you do this and you do it consistently. So you get creativity, you get confidence, you get courage, and uh, and all of that stuff. And another secret that I think you'll find really important is to be active in a community. This is uh, not for everybody, but one of the things that a lot of people struggle with is they're doing things in isolation. They don't have support. They don't have examples of other people taking action. Lee today was awesome. He is sharing some videos uh, from himself in our mastermind group. Harvinder shares a lot of uh, his work. Um, and, uh, oh man, uh, Michael was there today with... Man, did he ever have a ton of stuff that's going on there in his memory palaces. And we just have so much stuff. Adolfo's great. He, Adolfo's done little tutorials of what he's doing for his exams and whipping out 95% scores on his medical physics stuff. Um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So definitely want to be there uh, for that. And just any community. Create your own community. Get a meetup group going. Um, do... Uh, do what it takes to have other people around you to inspire you, to give you insights, to keep you moving forward. And use the techniques every day, every day. Uh, you might be wondering, like, what would I use these techniques for? So names, people you meet. Uh, I, I still am blown away. This Abraham guy yells at me on the street the other day. And then uh, his son, Lem, is there. And then his daughter, Amy, is there. And then we're sitting there chatting. I just got recognized from the internet. And uh, then this woman comes and her name is Lisa. She's like, I know you, you're Anthony. And then she's with this person named Ruby. I'm just memorizing their names, right? Memorizing their names. And uh, you just do this every day. And there's authors of books. So we memorize, or we talk, sorry, we talked a lot about different books today. How many of you took that opportunity to memorize at least one of those names, right? Um, you can do this all day long. Uh, book titles, of course. Um, page numbers. When you're reading, you can be like, oh, page 77. That's the most important thing. When I go meet Jordan Peterson in February, I'm going to take this book. He's going to sign it. And I'm going to get him. I'm going to ask him. I'm saying, will you, will you put your initials on page 77, please? Because this is the page that has helped me so much help so many people uh, even better than I was before because it helped me explain uh, existing competence in a way that I never thought of exactly that way before. So I'd love your initials right there on page 77. And uh, I won't have, uh, you know, all the time in the world with them, but um, it'd be pretty amazing if I was able to describe why I know it's 77. And it's just because of having a zero, zero to 99, boom, you know, you memorize the, the page, you use your image from the 00 to 77 to help you memorize what's on that page, and uh, away you go. So historical dates, also you can memorize. You can memorize prices, sports stats, facts. You can memorize vocabulary and phrases, poetry, scripture, and meditation. And uh, this is really, really, really important. Really, really important. And, uh, you know, all you got to do is you got to practice your uh, memory palace for large learning projects as well. So you have the everyday uses, but to get the most out of this technique, prepare your memory palace net network in advance and encode and decode daily. Be flexible with your memory palaces. So sometimes you'll go in and memorize something and it will, you know, you'll, you'll need to make changes to the memory palace network as you go along. Uh, which is fine, and you learn a lot from doing this. But just be flexible, be be kind with yourself, and uh, as I mentioned before, rotate the content that you work on for re relief, uh, for for topic relief, and uh, think about the stress and release. So that setting a timer thing that I was talking about earlier, you're actually like focusing for a short blast of time, and then you release, you let it go, and at the end of the day, you know, back to Sten, less is more, right? Less is more often, so. Would you like to get like every last little thing out of something and struggle? Or would you like to just have a great time with the memory palace because you're willing to just break it down and little, be a little bit more um, relaxed? So um, at the end of the day, you know, fantasy is fun uh, and dreaming and hoping about the memory palace working for you. Yeah, great fun and so forth. But you want to really, really make sure that you focus on the doing of the actual practice of the technique and be consistent about it. Really, really, really important. 
So, um, Lee says, gracias, gracias. It's all about community, baby. Strength in numbers. Yes, yes, yes. Lee, memorize rest. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Jay says, cool, Dr. Peterson, sharp thinker. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. This is, I believe, February 17th, if I memorize the date correctly. Not too soon before my birthday, so it's my birthday present, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Pratik says, do you know about Akashic Records? Some people can access. It's like a knowledge hub of the entire universe. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm familiar vaguely, and uh, uh, that's all I'll say, and it sounds pretty vague to me. Um, but I am memorizing information that also people who are into that stuff um, seem to believe in. If you're interested, there's on the Magnetic Mary Method forum, there was a chat today about woo-woo in the context of Giordano Bruno that I uh, highly encourage you to check out. Um, so that's on the Magnetic Mary Method forum. Why don't I just dig up that link for you? Uh, because it is uh, very interesting. And I think you'll benefit from that discussion. Everybody here who cares about knowledge and wants to learn more about our beautiful tradition Bruno is a guy that you're going to want to know, and uh, you're going to benefit from thinking through these thoughts. And, you know, uh, the person, my interlocutor here, has some very interesting thoughts of his own that you might want to consider. So go and check that out. Pratik says, how do you prepare bulletproof tea or coffee? I have an actual channel on, uh, sorry, I have a YouTube video that shows you how I did it. So... I'll uh, see if I can find that link for you um, so that I don't have to repeat stuff that already is there and that you can enjoy here. When you're watching this video, hit the thumbs up, leave me a comment on it and enjoy uh, your bulletproof coffee if you do any of that. All right, so uh, let's see. Hmm. Well, to sum all this up, and we'll see if we're going to do a book chapter here or not. Um, basically, a lot of people, they get Sherlock Holmes in mind when they think of the Mind Palace, which is another reason why I don't use the term that much. And uh, here's the thing. A lot of people want a Mind Palace like Sherlock Holmes. And the problem is, is that Sherlock Holmes didn't exist. So how could you ever have a mind palace like Sherlock Holmes? Remember we talked earlier about how important mental models are. Well, I'm not saying that you couldn't have great things from modeling after a fantasy figure, but there are so many great nemesis who are real, who do things that are real, that you might want to model it after real people. Real people. And let Sherlock Holmes be the fantasy guy that he is. And the extent to which <laughs> that it's even in, uh, it's even related to anything that has to do with learning and remembering information that improves your life is just so pretty far fetched and highfalutin. So um, you are what you remember. So focus on you and focus on frames that work, that can work better because they're based on reality. So that's uh, that's today's presentation. If people have questions and comments and want to stick around, I'm going to see if I can get a few more people to give me a hell yeah on a book chapter here. And uh, if not, well, then maybe we'll save it for our dojo and uh, give it to Lee then. Um, but let's see here. Ryan's adventure, Internet Adventure is here. Good to see you, man. Uh, 1.30 a.m. Well, don't let this interrupt your sleep. There is a replay. Uh Lee says, why didn't they just listen with an open mind dogma? It's the killer of dreams. Yes, yes, certainly uh, it is. Oh, you're, <laughs> now I see your previous comment. Uh, yeah, that yeah, episode, that I've seen that with uh, Tyson and uh, Cosmos and, and Bruno. Yeah, Bruno's an interesting character. Anyway, if you're not active in the forum there, you can go read that forum uh, post and the discussion there. And uh, uh, you can let me know if I'm a little bit too... Uh, but um, <laughs> Lisa, Lisa says, come on, people, hell yeah. J.A., I don't know what you retracted there. I missed it, but 
Ryan says, how do you keep track of the spacing effect of recall rehearsal for memory palaces? Oh, great question. You keep track of it by doing it. And uh, you have a memory journal. And then there's, there's, there's m several different ways of uh, tracking it. Um, you can use an Excel file. I, I think that's a great starting point, but it's not something you want to get trapped in because the, whatever you, you do, you may uh, continue longer than is necessary. Um, so that's kind of uh, important to think about. So uh, scheduling, you're bad at scheduling. Uh, I would just suggest that you get, you practice getting better at scheduling. I mean, one of the things that I absolutely love is uh, right here, which is just a simple tool called the Freedom Journal. So, you know, big old Bible. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty hard to uh, pretty hard to ignore when you use it every day because it's big. Uh, so that's something you might try. And JA says pen and paper is best for me, Excel 2 or OneNote. Yeah, if you're in our mastermind group, you'll see um, what Michael, the great Michael Swain, posted earlier today. And uh, wow, he's he's really great to, to follow what he's doing there. So um, you can check that out. In any case, again, this uh, Sherlock Holmes stuff, fantasy is fun, but focus on you. You are what you remember. You are the quality of what you remember. And... Uh, yeah, that's today's presentation. Thanks, everybody, for being here. And uh, it's uh, always a great honor and pleasure to serve. I'll stick around here for a minute if there are any further questions. But one of the things that you're absolutely going to love about the course at magneticmarymethod.com forward slash YT, if you haven't taken it before, is how it will show you to create a correct, well-formed memory palaces and give you some examples of you know a student who really took action and got it done went on to memorize uh, dozens of poems and also revive uh, german and was soon reading in german and so you can model all that uh, from someone uh, someone taking action right and action is everything so ja says thanks to all the community thanks dr mithivier uh, so Ryan says, I meant that it had automatic scheduling. There's no such thing as automatic scheduling, really. I mean, <laughs> I've tried some of these things for research purposes and, uh, maybe it's a different thing, but I am least likely to obey a notification when it comes up because notifications are annoying and it's just like, <laughs> who cares? Um, it just really, it's, it, it's just an, an annoyance. I'm so glad that Sam Harris does not have notifications in the Waking Up app, and I hope he never does, because I just use the Waking Up course when I want to, right? But I am so unlikely to obey. <laughs> hey, man, it's time to practice your uh, useless flashcards that have zero creativity in them, right? Anki, to me, is a just an, like look, this is a great, great software. People design some great stuff, but to me, this is an utter, absolute waste of time, uh, and it's a waste of time for many, many reasons. One of which is that a lot of people don't use it creatively. Creatively, so you can use it creatively. Creatively, there's no two ways about it. But um, it is uh, unlikely that people will, and it just ends up being in the dust of notifications, all kinds of crap going on. It's on a screen that is related to digital amnesia, creation of digital amnesia, which is a huge problem for a lot of people. It's not interactive, it's not engaging, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but in any case, to each a zone, and if people get results from it, and I do know people who do get results from, from it, but they tend to be very, very well-practiced rote learners. And so they're creative rote learners, and they're very, very good, and they tend to tell me that their preference is good old index cards, um, if they're going to do that. And uh, Anki will be a supplement to it, but not a replacement. So J.A. says, creates his own first on paper, then organizes with tags. Great. Um, 
I imagine OneNote, yeah, could could do that, and uh, Evernote also uh, could do that. And uh, look, I'm I'm all for anybody who gets results, provided that those results are genuine and you're not self-deluding yourself. And so, part of my uh, talking the way that I do about it is that I realized that repetition on devices does not work for me. Not only is it tedious and boring, but it is absolutely a no-no. And uh, <laughs> I knew this. I knew this from the very early days of uh, these apps that would have spaced repetition, and it was one of the influences on a on a solo album I released called Technono. <laughs> so I did a lot of electronic music, but I was thinking of uh, my absolute disgust with uh, pitiful results from technology back then. So it was part of the influence of calling that album. Heck no, no, because uh, even back in those days, I thought of uh, a lot of things being um, no-nos, and I still do. So, J.A. says, software is a contrivance, artistry is best, art of memory, or ars memorativa. It's also that exact way for um, ars combinatoria, too, uh, to be sure. Um, that's an interesting point that you raise, too, because... Um, some people have argued that memory techniques are artificial and they've used this term artificiality throughout history. And I cannot see that being the case. What could be more natural than using your creative mind and your memory in, uh, and your images to, um, to absolutely explode your capacity for memorizing? Like it's just, it is the most natural thing that you can do because it's in your brain, in your neurochemistry. And uh, it's so beautiful. So as you say here, yes, combinations help. Yep, ours combinatoria. Beautiful. And we're going to go deep into that topic in the near future. So one more reason you want to be on my email list, which all starts with magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT. So if anybody here has not availed themselves of this free course, let me pop that link into the chat so you can grabby grab it right now and uh, let me take care of you. All right. Bruno was the first semiotician, says J.A. Hmm. How so? <laughs> this I would be interested in. Uh, I mean... If we're going to be a stickler about it, wouldn't we, wouldn't we want to really... No, I wouldn't say Saussure is uh, the first semiotician. I'd rather put it with Pierce, but... Um, I don't know. I don't know what you mean with Bruno, but I would definitely love to hear more about how he could be the first semiotician. Um, anachronisms are, are fun and fine, but... Uh, I don't know if that works at the end of the day. And I don't know how it works, but you can feel free to convince me uh, if you like. All right, so Lee, I, uh, I'm gonna skip the book chapter and uh, I'm gonna keep a mental note of the uh, interest of this time zone, uh, th this particular thing. Overall, I'm relatively pleased by the um, by the interactivity at this time, but uh, we shall see what happens on the replay to see if uh, people are engaged and uh, enjoying this and active and having fun. And I think we'll be calling it a day for today, but just to sum up one last time, really, 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 what you need to do the most is have multiple memory palaces and you need to use them, put them into use. And uh, you want to absolutely, absolutely make sure that you have a experience that's consistent and it's linked to information that's actually going to improve your life. And this is so important and it's important exactly for the reasons that I've stated just in practical terms of fueling your motivation. You can engineer more motivation. And we've talked about exactly how that works today. So I hope that you'll go out and do it. I hope that you will 
keep us posted on your progress. And I hope that you'll continue to be as active as many of you have been today. And keep the fun humor coming. Uh, keep the all caps for uh, other languages where that's more acceptable and uh, interesting to people. And continue to visit me at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT if you don't have that free course. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, so uh, Pierce, but everyone has a piece of the puzzle. Everyone is a big word, my friend. <laughs> everyone is a big word. I wouldn't go that far. That would not be very semiotically correct. Um, you know, funny story. I wonder, I wonder if uh, my friend would give this back to me. I would, I would, I would think twice before I did. But uh, one last little story here. Once upon a time, once upon a time, I met Umberto Eco, and I uh, was with a friend named Brent, and we didn't care for a second about the fact that he was given this obscure speech about semiotics at the University of Toronto. I mean, we did. We were interested. But we wanted to get our novels signed, right? And at the end, he looked like he was so disappointed that we didn't come with one of his academic texts to get it signed. And, you know, when I think about this in retrospect, it's so bizarre that only two people wanted to get anything signed. Maybe I'm misremembering that. I don't know. But in any case... It just seemed like everybody left. He did his semiotics thing. Maybe they were being super respectful or something. But anyway, I went with the name of the rose and Brent went with Foucault's pendulum. And I asked, uh, he, he, signed, he signed it. And I asked him, I said, you know, at some point in one of your books, you made like this reference that possibly Umberto Eco is not your name. And, uh, and he just said, Lolita. <laughs> And I thought about this and, uh, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of competing things. I'm getting ugly sister effect here, but I think that somehow I pieced it together over time. And I think he's probably was making the statement that Umberto Eco is Humbert Humbert. <laughs> indeed, indeed, Lolita, indeed. So, um, Interesting. But anyway, I ended up giving that book away to a friend of mine, signed The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. And uh, I, I only sort of thought about it when he passed away recently. But one of the neat things that I have in my memory is that I've, I, I didn't have a large amount of books that were signed by people, but I did have, you know, a couple. And I, I wound up giving them away uh, over different periods of time. So I had Barbara Gowdy, uh, a book from her signed. Um, which, you know, Jay is probably a obscure <laughs> Canadian reference, but anyway, it was kind of cool. Christopher Dudney also, uh, related to Barbara Gowdy in some sense, or at least they were at the time. Um, and David Cronenberg, I had his signature on the graphic novel for existence. Meeting him was wild, uh, at this particular, uh, event, uh, which I've written about actually, uh, at, in a novel that has not been released. Uh, I fictionalized it. Um, who else did I have signed? Um, in any case, it's an interesting memory exercise to go through in one's mind and think of all the signed books and then think about who you gave it to. Oh yeah. I had Darren Brown's signature also in tricks of the mind, which I gave to, uh, to Tim, uh, Gerwing, who's an amazing, amazing Canadian musician. And he actually designed the first iteration of the magnetic Mary method site. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to ask him if he still has that Darren Brown thing. I don't, I don't want him to give it back to me. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, oh, Jay has Timothy Finley. Is it Headhunter? Headhunter is one of my favorite novels of all time by Timothy Finley. Ironically, it's also the only novel <laughs> that I've read from Timothy Finley, but I absolutely love it. Chris Ondaatje. I didn't know there was a Chris Ondaatje, but I know Michael Ondaatje. Um, what was it? The Cinnamon Peeler, I think. I didn't have it signed, but I remember I really liked that book. It's poetry. Uh, and the only novel I read of his was uh, The English Patient. Uh, oh, and he has a great book, uh, actually, Michael Andachi, with um, with uh, that film editor, um, whose name escapes me at the moment, but uh, that's a cool book. That's a cool book. Um, Chris Andachi wrote an accounting dictionary. Interesting. Uh, so, yeah, Michael Andachi, very cool guy. 
so Sandeep says, can I get some books for memory training? Yeah, absolutely. Here, uh, click this link and register for the free course. You get uh, some PDFs and uh, even better than those PDF eBooks, you get um, a video course. So grab that. You'll enjoy. And uh, uh, please avail yourself and make sure you complete the assignment so that uh, we can see that you're on the right track. Um, what else did I have signed by somebody? Um, Lee says, Darren Brown's amazing guy and artist. So many skills. Yeah, he's super inspiring, Darren Brown. And uh, really interesting stuff about memory in Tricks of the Mind. Um, it is a, a wonderful, wonderful book. If you haven't read Tricks of the Mind, I highly recommend it. He has some uh, books as well on on magic that are quite good. I haven't yet read uh, Happiness, I think it's called, the new one, but uh, I heard him on the Le did the Joe Rogan show, yeah, uh, recently, and that was a great episode. Uh, the one uh, with Sam Harris is quite good as well. Um, uh, and, you know, these are really interesting ones. The Joe Rogan one and the Sam Harris one are interesting because normally when he's interviewed, you know, it's in the context of a popular TV show and he's going to do a sort of demonstration of mentalism, but he doesn't do any demonstration. I saw Miracle in Ash... Is it? Is it called? Uh, Aylesbury. I saw it in Aylesbury in the UK there. And uh, wow, that was amazing. It was amazing to see him live. Um, I'll never forget... I'll never forget this because uh, I have a deep interest in faith healing. And then so he did this faith healing sort of uh, uh, demonstration there. And it was so wild. It was so wild. And because I've done a lot of studies into magic and mentalism and done magic performance myself, um, I really, really enjoyed the uh, I really enjoyed the whole process uh, of seeing it from such a master. Um, and it doesn't ruin it all when you know the tricks. It's actually, it's it just makes you so much more uh, aware. And obviously, of course, uh, I don't know every single thing, but I know a lot of the I know a lot of the general principles of how it works. And it doesn't doesn't take anything away from it at all. Uh, nothing whatsoever. Really, really brilliant. Um, so yeah, Darren Brown, if you can see him perform. It's incredible. Uh, so, J.A., you were complaining about caps before, and now your uh, your typos are just getting way out of control here. <laughs> Vuk Ger Book. <laughs> so, Lee has tricks of the mind. We'll have to dig it out. Yeah, there's a, there's an amazing chapter on memory there. Uh, oh, J.A. is saying, Timothy Finley signed my accounting dictionary inscribed. I did not write this book. Funny. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. Uh, Darren Brown being a shy guy, yeah. Um, I think performers often are. That seems to be a common, a common uh, characteristic of them. So I don't know what that is psychologically and so forth, but very, very interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. Okay, so... Um, I guess that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for being here today. And uh, if you have any questions that, uh, that come to mind in the days and the weeks ahead, please do pop them into the internet somewhere, uh, ideally on this video if you come back to it. And as always, appreciate this time. I hope that you enjoy last week's uh, podcast and blog post. I'll just quickly throw that into the screen here in case that you missed it, because I think that especially if you're a student or a lifelong learner, a mature learner who likes to be totally alive in your mind and keep going, you're going to want to check this one out. It's on how to study fast and... It is a practical guide to high volume learning at speed. So enjoy 
good night to everyone. And uh, let me know. Make sure you send me some love to let me know you appreciate this time zone and the opportunity to do live sessions when uh, this time zone is in your part of the world. Thank you again, everybody. Until we have a chance to speak again, come visit me at magneticmemorymethod.com and keep yourself magnetic. Bye-bye.